Hey guys, it's Mrs. Blue, back to Create Some Art. Uh, let's start with business. I have a YouTube channel called Mrs. Blue, Let's Make Some Art. If you haven't already looked it up, you can find me there and you can subscribe to my channel so you get updates when I post new videos. Uh, I'm trying to post one video every weekday. After you complete the art lessons, if you send me an email with a picture of you and your completed lesson at jlpick at cps.edu, you might have a chance of winning a virtual golden paintbrush. So let's announce today's golden paintbrush winner. Drum roll, please. Today's golden paintbrush winner is the lovely, the beautiful, Kaylee Cavazos. I hope I pronounced your last name right, Kaylee. Uh, here's Kaylee and her amazing uh, rain boots stomping in the rain. Here's the golden paintbrush. So I'm very proud of Kaylee. This is amazing. She did a great job. Good work, Kaylee. Keep creating art. You should. You're a great artist. Okay, so today, we're going to learn about an artist named Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh painted his bedroom, this bedroom scene behind me, you can see right here. That's by Vincent Van Gogh. And he also painted sunflowers, like you can see on my dress. He was very famous for painting sunflowers. So today we are going to recreate uh, some of Vincent Van Gogh's sunflowers, kind of replicating this image right here. This is a, a replica, or this is a picture, a copy of Vincent Van Gogh's sunflowers. So we're going to make some sunflowers like this. So what you will need for today's project is a piece of paper, something to color your sunflowers with. Of course, you can use crayons, paints, anything you choose, pencil, eraser, and then a couple interesting things that we haven't really used yet. Uh, I am going to use little cupcake liners, white cupcake liners, to create my sunflowers like Vincent Van Gogh. Now, if you just want to cut circles out of paper, that will work awesome too. So you don't have to have cupcake liners. I just thought it'd be kind of fun. So I'm going to make my sunflowers out of cupcake liners. We'll use those in a minute. First, we're gonna kind of create the scene for the sunflowers. Okay, so we want to draw uh, this beautiful background for the sunflowers before we ever get to coloring them. So let's start by doing that. Let's draw kind of a picture frame that our sunflowers will go in because we want this to look like a artist masterpiece when we're done. So I'm gonna start by drawing, and I'm not using a ruler or anything like that. It's not necessary. I'm gonna start by drawing a kind of rectangle around the edge of my paper. And look, I'm not stressing out about that. It doesn't matter if it's not straight, like so. And then I'm gonna add kind of a fun frame around it because why not? So maybe I'll add this little squiggly here. Better match it on the other side. Excuse my reach. Do, 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 do. Match it on the bottom. And then, and you know yours, of course, I say this all the time, does not have to look anything like mine. I just thought it'd be fun to make this super fancy frame for Van Gogh's flowers. Van Gogh was kind of this troubled artist, and he, um, you know, in the 1800s when he was creating art, uh, people didn't really like his art very much and they kind of laughed and made fun of him and he was kind of this wayward wanderer. He traveled around creating art. He didn't have like a permanent home and people kind of made fun of him a little bit and um, so he kind of got bullied a little bit uh, while he was creating art and I wish he could be alive today to see 
uh, how famous his art became because he'd be shocked to know uh, how, how famous he became. I'm going to erase these lines right here. I don't think he ever knew when he was alive how much his artwork would sell for, you know, of course, for millions and millions of dollars. Okay, so that's pretty fun, that picture frame, right? I like that. And now we're gonna draw the vase that the flowers go in, cause our flowers need a vase. So I'm gonna start right here, kind of in the middle of the frame, cause I really want room for all the flowers up here. So again, I'm gonna try to replicate Van Gogh's vase, but you certainly don't have to. And look at how the flowers kind of fill up the whole top of the paper. Okay, so let's see. Here, I'm gonna start by making a little oval like this. I'm gonna leave the top of the oval open because all the flowers are gonna burst out. And then I'm gonna go around and down almost to the bottom of the paper, around. And it is just really hard to get the proper shape with these bases to get it to match evenly. Like, look at mine, that just doesn't match at all. Maybe that's a little better, but it's fine, looks great. Okay, now I'm gonna curve out the bottom here and I am going to draw a curve on my vase like this, like Van Gogh's, and I am going to write my name on the vase just like Vincent Van Gogh wrote his name. And then I am also going to draw a line to represent the table. Look at that, pretty cool. All right, now, as always, you can use any sort of marker you want to trace, but I am going to take a brief moment to trace everything because it just looks better when it's traced, in my opinion. So we're going to trace everything here, ladies and gents. Around we go. Sorry, that sound of that marker is rather irritating. I'll try not to make it squeak too much. Imagine in my classroom when 30 kids are using these, it can cause a racket. This picture frame is looking pretty Fancy, like whatever artwork is in it would sell for millions. I'm gonna have to sell my flowers for millions of dollars after I'm done painting them. Ooh, one more line up here. Can't see with my hand in the way. All my designs. The ground or the table. My vase. I'm going to trace my name too. I need a littler marker for this, don't I? It looks artistic because it's a bit sloppy. We'll say that, right? Okay, <clears throat> look. Everything's traced. That looks super awesome. Now, I, since I used a permanent marker, it's already dry. Um, it dries very fast. I'm going to take an eraser and very carefully, I don't want to rip my thin paper, I'm going to erase just a few of those lines that I didn't trace. So neat. And then wipe these on the floor. I'll vacuum them up later. Okay, there we go. That's pretty fun. Okay, now um, I'm going to take... Watercolor paints, I'm gonna, I think I just made a mark there. There we go. You can use anything you would like. I say that all the time. Don't feel that you have to use watercolors. And I'm gonna just paint this up real quick because it'll look super neat before we create the flowers. All right, so let's give this a go. I'm gonna get some yellow. There we go. I can re 
trace my name later if I need to, if it gets too covered up with paint. I like to blend, you know, just as fun. Looks better than just one solid color, but don't forget, sometimes you have to wait for one color to dry a little bit before you do that too much or you'll rip your paper. Once you start to see little chunks on your paper, that's your paper ripping, not chunks of paint likely. So you have to be extra careful. Okay. Try to get close to those edges carefully. Let's do a fun background. You know, I'm not even gonna, I'm gonna cheat right now, get ready. I'm not even gonna paint the entire background because I'm gonna be gluing flowers. And I don't want my paper when I'm teaching this lesson to be too wet. Uh, so if you would like to paint your whole background, just wait before you glue the flowers on. Right? I'm just going to kind of go around the edge. I'm going to leave a little bit in the middle there dry so it's ready to glue on flowers. That would be fun to add a little green. So it looks a bit more like kind of a sea foam green instead of a just blue. But that'd be fun. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, now last, I just forgive me for a second. I'm going to make sure my brush is not too wet. I just want to add a little bit of shading and detail to the face to make it look, you know, rounded. And you don't have to do any of this. Okay, now, very quick like. Let me get a little black. Whoa. That was so much black. I'm going to just quick like, kind of intentionally. I want it to look just a little, a little artsy. Nothing too serious. Remember, a little black goes a long way. barely touching my brush to the black. My brush is so black right now. Kind of like that gray color too. I could have just stuck with a little bit of black and made it a more gray color. It's kind of nice. Whoa, I'm going too fast. Let's see if I can hide that. There we go. Tiny dip of water. And you could paint your frame brown too. And it, it, 
and make it look like a doorbell. We're greeting the mailman. So let's take a minute and say hi to the dog. Why not? That's Vienna. Yeah. Were you greeting the mailman, Vienna? You say hi to all of our fans? We're not done with our Vincent Van Gogh yet. Yeah. Yeah. You interrupted my artistic video, but you know, that's life. Okay. Go on to your bed. Okay, so let's take some cupcake holders. Now is the time for those. I'm gonna move this out of the way for just a second and let it dry for a moment. Okay, so you could also use paint on these. I'm gonna use markers. So I'm gonna do, I don't know, maybe like six or seven flowers. We'll see if I do that any. Okay, so I'm gonna take these markers, these three, and I'm going to just press these like so. And I'm gonna color a brown center. You know, these are kind of waxy. So it kind of looks a little bit waxy. You have to be careful, it'll stay sticky for a little bit. And I'm going to color them like this, just like a sunflower. And it's going to kind of have texture like a sunflower. There we go. Let's do three for now so I don't waste your time too much and then I'll go back after the video is done and I will add on even more because I think more sunflowers will just look awesome. Okay, I need to finish the brown center. You know, sunflowers have kind of a furry center, so you can just kind of scribble scrabble that part. And then I'm going to add a little bit of orange, because sunflowers also have shades of orange. And you might need to look at my fingers, you might need to set those to dry for a minute if your cupcake holders are a bit waxy like mine. But these are washable markers, so just some soap and water when I'm done and they'll wash right off my hand. Maybe I'll use less orange on this one to make a variety. Okay, now let's take this and I'm going to get my glue stick, my handy dandy glue stick. And I am going to, let me move these out of the way, start gluing on my sunflowers. So this is where you can kind of shape them a little bit. You know, sprinkle, sprinkle, scrunkle. There we go. And I'm gonna put some glue right here. I'm gonna press down one of my sunflowers. It'll take a minute to dry. Sprinkle it up a little bit. Let's put another sunflower right here. And another one right here. Oh yeah, look at that, how cool. And then if you want, you can draw some stems 
you know, coming down from your sunflowers into the pot like so, but I kind of covered up my space. You know, I don't even need to do that. So there is my replica of Vincent Van Gogh's sunflowers uh, with the frame and everything. Pretty fun. So I hope you enjoyed that project despite the interruption from my dogs. Uh, and yeah, create some Vincent Van Gogh sunflowers. I think these turn out so nice and neat. Um, I can't wait to see yours. Okay, bye. Have a great day. I'll see you again tomorrow.